on World News Tonight. High stakes showdown. Make or break moment as Biden's government attempts to avert crises. No needles. Pfizer on the verge of introducing a new form of remedy for the deadly virus. Explosive tensions. North Korea defies global authority in the latest nuclear launch. Celebrating independence. Spectacular shows mark 200 years of freedom from Spain. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. Well, very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We start off today's coverage from the updates of the COVID pandemic. Eight months after receiving his first two doses of COVID-19 vaccine, U.S. President Joe Biden received a booster shot at the White House today. This comes as critics say his administration's booster rollout plan has been confusing. I'm going to get my booster shot and uh, right here. At the White House today, President Biden rolling up his sleeve, getting a COVID vaccine booster eight months after getting his first two doses. 23% of Americans still haven't gotten any shots. That distinct minority is causing an awful lot of us, uh, uh, an awful lot of damage for the rest of the country. But now critics say his administration's booster rollout has been confusing. Some states are handling it differently. Vermont limiting boosters to those 65 and older. West Virginia's governor urging people 18 and older to get them. They're dancing around it with some gobbledygook language, but they're open the floodgates wholeheartedly and everything to say, go get the booster shots. This, this and tonight, growing backlash over vaccine mandates. A requirement for New York health care workers took effect today. The governor says she'll call in the National Guard if they don't show up for work. I'm hopeful I don't have to do this. With more schools back in session over the past two weeks, children made up more than 26% of all new COVID cases. That's an 8% jump from two weeks before. Across much of the country, new COVID cases overall are down. But in places with low vaccination rates like Kentucky, hospitalizations are still high. St. Clair Regional Medical Center in Moorhead is struggling to find space. In its parking lot, the hospital set up this tent for monoclonal antibody treatments. Australian authorities announced plans to gradually reopen lockdown Sydney, unveiling a two-tiered system that will give citizens inoculated for COVID-19 more freedom than their unvaccinated neighbours for several weeks. Let's cross over to other than a world news pressure correspondent, Timothy Philip, reporting from Melbourne in Australia. For more, Timothy. Yes, Shena. Movement restrictions across New South Wales, the country's most popular state, will be lifted gradually between October 11th and December 1st. However, people who are not fully inoculated will be barred from joining the vaccinated to receive community sports, dining out, shopping and other activities until the final date. Berejiklian did not detail how the block on the activity by the unvaccinated would be enforced. Once 80% vaccination is achieved, expected a few weeks later, statewide travel will be allowed. Neighbouring Victoria has not yet given a date when all residents, including those unvaccinated, may move around without restrictions. The state is, however, expected to relax some curbs from Wednesday when the number of adults receiving a first vaccine dose tick over 80%. While businesses and the tourist industry broadly welcome the New South Wales reopening plan, some advocate groups said vaccination rates were not high enough among vulnerable groups like the indigenous population, people with disabilities, and those in regional areas with low vaccine supply. Back to you, Shanelle. All right, thank you. That was other than a World News Special Correspondent, Timothy Philip, reporting from Melbourne in Australia. Dozens of students got their COVID-19 jabs in schools in Paris as France gears up to require teens to present a health pass for access in several public places. To get more details on this, other than a World News Special Correspondent, Chetana Dharmaratna joins us now from Normandy in France. Chetana. Yes, Chanal. More than 100 middle and high school students braved their fear of needles at Diodero High School as the vaccination campaign of youth aged 12 to 17 continues its course. Among them was Florian Paris Dufour, who said he is getting inoculated to be able to go out with friends in restaurants and travel again. 71% of teenagers have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine so far, and 62% are fully vaccinated. 
The number of teens vaccinated with at least one dose rose from 770,000 in early July to more than 3.5 million. The rise in the vaccination rate could partially be due to the announcement that teens will have to show the health pass, showing proof of vaccination, a negative PCR test, or a recent recovery from COVID to enter restaurants, cinemas, cultural venues, and trains starting Thursday, September 30th. Back to you, Shanali. Thank you. That was other than in our world news special correspondent Chetan and Dharmaratna reporting from Normandy in France. We have some good news for you. Just as getting jabbed was getting a bit tricky, Pfizer said that it has started a large study testing its investigational oral antiviral drug for the prevention of COVID-19 infection among those who have been exposed to the virus. What if coronavirus could be prevented with a pill? Pfizer said on Monday it has started testing an oral antiviral drug for people exposed to COVID. In a mid to late stage study, Pfizer will test a pill in up to 2,660 healthy adults aged 18 or older. Participants in the trial must live in the same household as a person with a confirmed case of coronavirus. The antiviral pill is designed to block the activity of a key enzyme needed for the coronavirus to multiply. Pfizer and its rivals, including U.S.-based Merck, have been racing to develop an easy-to-administer pill for COVID-19. To date, Gilead Sciences' intravenous drug remdesivir is the only approved antiviral medicine for COVID-19 in the U.S. And while effective, it is time-consuming, costly, and requires medical assistance to administer the treatment. President Joe Biden faces make or break decisions on his signature priorities this week, the bipartisan infrastructure plan and on massive climate and social program spending. Lawmakers are up against a Friday deadline to prevent a government shutdown. Tonight, President Biden's political and policy legacy on the line. After today's vaccine, his plans in need of a boost. What is the state for your agenda and your presidency with what's happening on the Hill this week? Victory is First, facing a deadline to keep the federal government open by this Friday. Tonight, Republicans blocking a bill to fund the government and extend the country's good credit until December. So Democrats will try again. This week, make or break decisions on the president's signature priorities, a $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure plan and the massive climate and social program spending currently at $3.5 trillion. We do that, the country's going to be in great shape. While Republicans complain the Biden agenda is too costly. It's paid for by putting a debt onto the next generation of Americans. That's how it's paid for. It's going to a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back and now we move on to the nuclear tensions in Korea. According to the South Korean military, North Korea fired an unidentified projectile towards the sea off its east coast today amid Pyongyang's call for the United States and South Korea to scrap their hostile policy. North Korea fired an unidentified projectile off its eastern coast on Tuesday. That's according to South Korea's military. And Japan's defense ministry said it appeared to be a ballistic missile, but gave no further details. The announcement came just before North Korea's ambassador to the United Nations, Kim Song, urged the U.S. to give up its hostile policy towards Pyongyang. We are just building up our national defense in order to defend ourselves and reliably safeguard the security and peace of the country. North Korea has accused Seoul and Washington of double standards saying they denounced its weapons development while continuing their own military activities. The North and South have been developing increasingly sophisticated weapons, and back in September, both test-fired ballistic missiles. Washington condemned the North's September test and a separate launch days earlier. Experts said that may have been its first cruise missile capable of carrying a nuclear warhead, a threat to its neighbours. At the same time, Washington did not mention Seoul's test of a submarine-launched ballistic missile, also fired in September. In a statement on Monday, the U.S. military said the latest missile launch posed no immediate threat to U.S. personnel or territory or U.S. allies. 
The judge investigating last year's deadly Beirut port explosion had to suspend work after what rights groups and victims' families condemned as another blatant case of political obstruction. Efforts to bring senior officials to account for the disaster hindered once again. The Beirut port blast inquiry was suspended on Monday following a complaint against its lead judge, Tarek Bitar. A former interior minister wanted for questioning accused him of being impartial and requested his removal from the case. Bitar, who was appointed after his predecessor was forced out following similar accusations, had been hit by a smear campaign and even threats. Recently, he received threats from Hezbollah's political party, which was made public. They were not physical threats, but could be interpreted as threats nonetheless. One vowed to discredit him. Prime Minister Najib Mikati, who came to power after Lebanon finally formed a government after 13 months of standoff, expressed hope that Judge Bita would continue his role. The probe being suspended under political pressure for the second time this year sends the wrong message to the international community when the country badly needs its financial support. We have placed a lot of hope in this new government, but we cannot have any illusions. This new government is supported and sponsored by this political class that has been implicated in the case by the judge. One of the biggest non-nuclear explosions ever recorded the blast in August last year was caused by a huge quantity of ammonium nitrate that was unsafely stored at the port from 2013. It killed 214 people, injured thousands of others and plunged Lebanon deeper into economic crisis. Survivors and victims' families are calling for a UN-led international investigation. A strong, prolonged earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of at least 5.8 struck the Greek island of Crete, killing one person and injuring 20 while damaging homes and churches and causing rock slides near the country's fourth largest city. A 5.8 magnitude earthquake shook Greece's largest island, Crete, on Monday, killing at least one person and injuring several, according to authorities. Damage was reported to many old buildings close to the epicentre in the east of the island. One man died when the dome of a small chapel in the town of Arkalaholi caved in during renovation works, according to a police official. The church was largely reduced to rubble. Stavros Kalayonakis is the rescue service chief. <laughs> The side walls were still standing, but the whole roof had collapsed and the rubble was one metre high. So we believed that hopes that the person would be alive were very slim. With the help of heavy machinery, we removed and emptied the rubble around and inside the church and reached the lifeless body of the poor worker underneath. The Greek Infrastructure Ministry said it had sent a group of civil engineers to assess the structural damage and assist in relief efforts. Civil protection authorities said nine people were injured in the quake, which damaged mainly old, unoccupied buildings in the wider Arkaraholi region. Still, many people in Crete's main city, Iraklion, some 20 miles away, rushed outdoors. A civil protection official said hotel rooms would be made available for people needing to stay outside of their homes overnight. And 2,500 tents would also be put up. In the Canary Islands, a volcano began spewing out ash again after a brief lull, where coastal residents are confined to their homes over fears of toxic gases when the lava hits the sea. After a brief lull, the rumble started again. Following a week of activity, the volcano on the Spanish island of La Palma fell silent for a few short hours on Monday before plumes of ash and fountains of lava were once again ejected from the crater. Over 500 buildings have been enveloped by the river of lava and more than 6,000 people have been evacuated, with some residents angry that some aren't taking the disaster seriously enough. But for those living on this paradise island, the tourist haven has been turned into a hellish landscape. 
The slow march of the lava is swallowing everything in its path as it gradually makes its way to the coast, now less than a kilometer away. Experts expect toxic clouds of gas to be released when the lava touches the sea, along with explosive shards of cooled rock. Residents in eastern coastal areas have therefore been ordered to stay inside their homes with their doors and windows shut. Conditions have improved enough for flights to resume, but not all airlines have deemed it safe enough to reopen operations. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. The UN Security Council has condemned North Korea's development of nuclear and ballistic missiles. At a meeting of the head of Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization said the treaty has maintained a norm against nuclear testing. A Brazilian mining firm has said some 39 mine workers have been trapped underground at a mine in Canada. The accident occurred when a vehicle transporting the workers was taken offline. Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi met with United Nations Security General Antonio Guterres via video link and said China has always attached a great importance to its cooperation. A multilateral meeting addressing concerns over the human rights of indigenous people in the United States, Canada and Australia was held in Geneva via video link on the sidelines of the 48th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council. Seven endangered Andean condors were released back to the wild in the mountains of Argentina after some of them were found ill and nursed back to the health. Venezuelan migrants in Northern Chile have been shaken by a series of angry protests by locals against settler camps which have popped up in city squares and even beaches, a reflection of simmering tensions over migration in the region. Instagram has hit pause on a new app it is creating for kids. The photo sharing service owned by Facebook said in a move that comes amid growing opposition for the project. Instagram has put the brakes on a new app that it's creating for kids amid growing opposition to the project. That's according to a Monday blog post from Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, after U.S. lawmakers and advocacy groups alike raised concerns that the photo-sharing app could be harmful to children's mental health and urged the social media giant to drop its launch plan. In the blog post, Instagram said that building a version of the app for kids was the right thing to do, but that it was pausing the work to consult with experts and policymakers and would continue building on its parental supervision tools. The company has said Instagram kids would require parental permission to join and provide ad-free, age-appropriate content. But Josh Golan, the executive director of Fair Play, an advocacy group focused on kids, said, quote, we won't stop pressuring Facebook until they permanently pull the plug. Earlier this month, the Wall Street Journal published a report that said Facebook is aware of evidence suggesting Instagram has a harmful effect on teenagers, particularly teen girls, but that the company has made minimal efforts to address the issue. Facebook, for its part, has said the report is inaccurate. Shares of Facebook were down slightly on Monday in early trading, but on a day when technology stocks fell broadly. And finally tonight, Mexico's government marked the 200th anniversary of its independence from Spain with a colorful show held in the middle of Mexico City. Mexico's defense ministry staged a reenactment at the Zocalo main square with more than 1,400 soldiers using technology, animations and laser beams to recreate the triumphal entry of the Mexican army to Mexico City back in 1821 after defeating the Spanish. The event staged some of Mexico's historical passages that were key during its 11 years of struggle to achieve independence. Troops from Mexico's army wore colonial garments and represented historical scenes. Folkloric dancers livened up the event. The show included live music played by Mexico's National Symphony Orchestra, a choir and mariachi band from Mexico's Defense Ministry as well as a children's choir. Before the show, diplomats from countries such as France, Russia, Serbia and India gave speeches congratulating Mexico. U.S. President Joe Biden sent a video message which was shown during the event. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Until then, stay safe and have a good night.